Hi, welcome to the tutorial. Um, in this tutorial, we're going to show you how easy it is to make a, a pop-up with this software, ADP. And we want to make a soft uh, pop-up with uh, with a background because uh, normally the normal pop-ups, you know, just plain color backgrounds. So we want to put an image in this one. Um, first thing you might see when you open the software are uh, these windows here, tips for getting started. You know, you can look at some tips. We just close that. There is already a, a predetermined template. So if you look in file and open new project template, you will see that there are quite a few different templates you can use already. So what we want to do is use the background image a template. So we open that one. And as you see, there's already some code in here, which is really basic HTML, nothing really, uh, nothing to worry about. And here is the here is the uh, the predetermined template file. What we want to do is change this background, change the sizes, and some different things on this temp on this uh, template, and then save it as our own pop-up. So one of the first things we need to do is to save this. So we go to File, we save as, and then. I've already got a, a directory inside on my desktop with the image inside. So let's just call this test. So that should save that. Now on my desktop where I've saved this, there's already an image inside here. And if I just make this a little bit smaller, you can also see in the directory I have saved ADP has created these files already for me. So what I want to do is get this background, so let's copy that, into my template. So make that smaller. So like I said before, in the pop-up content HTML editor, there's some really basic stuff here. It's the style, the position of, of the background, and here's the background itself, the image. Uh, by default, because we've saved into this uh, directory, there is no path to directory, so you can just put in there the name of, of the background image if you wanted. Paste. If you want to put the background into a separate directory called images, obviously then you would have to put here, for example, images and then backslash. But because it's in the, in the root directory of where we save the file, that should be enough. So if we save that again and then refresh, now you can see that the background has changed. Obviously, our background is a different size to the original template one, so we need to change in the size and position the width and the height of the pop-up itself. So the width would have been 400 and the height 270. So now you can see we have a really nice background in there. And that's how we change the background. Um, obviously, I'm not interested in the text that's already in there. I would like to change that. But again, that's all in the top here. So if you know if you want to change something, you can just delete some things here. This has been done in a paragraph, a p tag or an element paragraph element, or in HTML. Um, so the the template color was like a brownish reddish color. So I'm going to make that white, which would be a hexadecimal value of f f f f f six f's. Refresh. So we've changed that. Also, we don't need to do that, so we can just put something else in, whatever we want, really. My template changes should be good enough, and then we can refresh it. And there you can see, you can change the font size here if you want to. 16. Oh, oh sorry, font size is here. That's the wrong one. 22 pixels was font size. Refresh. What we actually changed here was the margin. So we could, you know, take that to five. And then you'll see that, yeah, you see, the text has come right over here now. But, you know, that, that, that's immaterial. It's just some of the settings. And if you know a little bit of HTML, you can you can make this. Um, and if you don't, you can find loads of resources on, uh, on the internet of basic HTML stuff. Really easy. So that, that's, that's a, a new background in a pop-up. There are loads of different things here. Um, for example, we can move the pop-up. I mean, if we refresh the pop-up, that's how it normally would appear on a page. So can move. If you stop that and then refresh it, 
you see that it's not possible to move the pop-up, so that's okay if you want a static pop-up. Can close. You can see now that the close button's gone, so nobody could close that pop-up, which is a little bit annoying sometimes, but it depends what you want to use it for, so now you can close it. Um, the title bar here is gray, so you can change that by pressing the title here, let's say one of nice bluish color, to suit the, the template, so okay, refresh. Obviously now the text is not visible, so we can change that, the title text, let's say white, okay, refresh, and there you go, the title text has been changed. Now the way the pop-up comes in and out of your web page is all down to this part here, the method. So you can open it after a certain amount of time, for example, we could say after two seconds of loading the web page. So if we refresh now, now we have to wait for two seconds, and there's the pop-up. Um, you can close it after a certain time, so if we refresh again, it will come in after two seconds. And then if we went one, two, three, there it goes, it's gone again. Um, entry effect here, you can give it a different entry effect. For example, you can slide it in from the left. left. So refresh again. And there you go, it's sliding in from the left. Let me just take down that, because I don't want it to open after a certain amount of time. I want to do it immediately, just for the purpose of this um, tutorial. So, And there are a number of other things here. You can procession, basically that means how many, time it, how many times the visitor has visited the site. So if he's already visited the site, the uh, ADP will put in a cookie so that the pop-up will not reappear, which is sometimes handy if you just don't want to bombard your, your visitors who are going through all your pages every now and again with the same pop-up. And obviously there's on exit, and this is more to do with um, how, how you would exit the pop-up. There might be a click, a, a separate button to click to exit the pop-up, or a text to exit the pop-up, but this we would do in a more advanced tutorial. For now, if we just save this, um, the pop-up's ready. So I mean, you can you can see again in here. There it is. There's the actual file that you need. This is the internal libraries that you need in JavaScript. And if you wanted to test this, what we could do is we need to compile it. We'll go through this in another tutorial more. But for now, let's just compile this one. So when you compile this, now what you need to do test on your website is transfer these these documents in that in that particular folder we made over to your web server into the into the directory where your web page is your HTML page and just copy this text here so, so you've even got a copy to clipboard so you can copy it directly and you copy that into the HTML page that you want the pop-up on so let's just say we've done that what happens now though in this has actually created a demo already for us. And you can see test preview. The, the preview, uh, the test is because we called the pop-up test. And uh, you see the, J file, the, JPEG, the, the JavaScript part files are called test2. If we'd called it something else, for example, my pop-up, then this would be my pop-up underscore preview. So if you run that in a browser, it might take a bit of time. Okay. Yeah, there we go. There it is. So you can see, obviously, it's not on a web page. It's just a preview to show you how it's working, and it's a little bit stored because we're trying to record the the the, the, the screen at the same time. But you know, basically, you can see your pop-up in action with the preview file. Okay. Uh, the next video I'll talk about, which is a generic video, so I won't do it every time I make a tutorial, will be about how to transfer the files from your, from your desktop and onto your website.